So today we're going to take a look at a fun micro brand called Studio Underdog. I think they have some very, very unique designs. And yeah, let's just take a closer look. So we have a diameter of 38.5, lug to lug of 44.5, height of 14, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for this watch, we're gonna have the uh, Siegel ST1901 chronograph movement beating away in here. This is the version with the swan neck regulator, which you can see up here in the corner. The crystal on the back is sapphire. The crystal on the front is double domed sapphire. On the dial, we have C3 Loom used really only on the hands. We don't have a screw down crown, but we do have uh, 50 meters of state of water resistance. And last but not least, the watch retails directly from Studio Underdog for 500 pounds, which is roughly about 600, 610 US dollars. So moving on to the dial of this watch, and this is probably the most interesting part about the watch itself. Studio Underdog is really nice because they're just having a little bit more fun with watch design and watch coloration than some other brands. What I really generally like about this one is the fact that they have, almost on every colorway, this degradé type effect to the dial, uh, the uh, fumé if you want to call it that. But it's not quite as aggressive as most Fume dials. You have a very lighter colored green in the middle, which goes much darker towards the edges. And then it's surrounded by this more uh, creamish, I guess you can call it cookie-ish uh, border. This particular colorway is called the Mint Chocolate Chip. And you definitely get that not only from the coloration of it, which is similar to the uh, mint green colored ice cream and the chocolate chip markers for one through 12, which is really, really fun uh, hint and detail there. Looking at the dial a little more generally, we do see we have a somewhat two-layer dial. We have a little bit more of a raised middle section, which holds the texture of the green dial. We have the more flat base dial, which has this uh, more tannish coloration to it. And it seems like this register, which is sunken in here, obviously not only has the same coloration as it, but is on the same uh, level as that more base dial. So it's nice because you do get a good amount of depth in the watch. You get a little bit of visual interest from the texture and the three-dimensionality. And I think it is pretty well executed here. As I mentioned earlier, we do have the chocolate chip markers for one through 12. All of them not quite the exact same shape, but they do look fun as you're going along. And for legibility purposes, we do have completely blacked out hands, uh, even the counter for the running seconds or the chronograph seconds rather is all blacked out with a little bit of hint of orange at the top just for visibility purposes. And the coloration of the orange does stand out from the down in a very neon type way. But at the end of the day, it doesn't look too terrible, but I wish maybe they would have tipped it in white or something similar. And then just before moving on, I do really like how they did the bicompact styling here. You do have the smaller sub register on the left and then you have the middle counter here on the right. It is much larger and that large and small patterning is actually mirrored in the text here too. Studio Underdog, a little bit more bold, a little bit larger in comparison to the Bicompax XT1901 uh, text there at the bottom. So it is really interesting. It almost feels like it's supposed to be offset. It almost feels like it's unbalanced, but for some reason, at least to me, it doesn't look visually out of place or visually wrong. It looks nice. And although there is a fair amount of text on the watch, I don't think it's overly done. Uh, you just have the name, you have I mean, Bicompax ST1901 is a little bit of a frivolous text. We know it's Bicompax, we know that's the movement it's using. But again, it balances out between the cell registers and just mechanical hand winding here at the bottom. So not too badly done, and let's zoom in closer and see how it holds up. So zooming in here, we do see the texture is still interesting, still very finely executed even under macro. It looks nice, and thankfully, it is very visible from wrist view. You don't have to just zoom in close to be able to appreciate the texture itself. Looking at the subseconds, we do see we have very nice concentric circling, kind of a railroad track around the outside. It does dip down nicely from the mid dial, add a little bit of depth to the watch, but it doesn't stand out crazily, especially since they did the hands in all black. So it blends in really well with the rest of the design. As you can see from the other sub register, you do have again a blacked out hand, a little bit of orange at the tip, a little bit of dirty, uh, not dirtiness, but a uh, lack of cleanness in the break between the colors, but it is fair for the price point. The track itself is done well. The kind of tri-color tone to the sub dial is done really well as well. Uh, but you do see we have like a little bit of mark there close to the base of the hand and something I've never noticed until zooming this close. Looking at the black handset itself, as you can see, it is done incredibly well. Sometimes when you do these kind of coatings to the hands, they can look a little bit of bubbly or a little bit uh, roughly done. But here it is nicely coated. It's very inky, very rich looking. So not only does it just contrast nicely with the dial and help legibility, but overall, I think it is just really well done. And I think it looks nice, especially since you have that kind of slight curvature to the hands themselves. And the loom infill you can see is very, very thinly applied. Honestly, I don't necessarily know why there is loom on the watch because there are no like loom pip for the uh, hour markers, but at least the loom infill itself is not too badly done. It's not too uh, splotchy or any pieces missing, but it does seem maybe a little dirtied by the surrounding coating. Uh, and again, 
very, very thinly done. It does have a very slight green tone to it, which I'm usually against, but because the dial itself is green, it doesn't look too bad. Overall, the printing, the chocolate markers, the way you have a nice depth to the dial itself, the way it distorts at the edges a little bit, uh, the dial is really well done. I think overall is pretty deserving of the price point and honestly is probably uh, more well finished than the price point would suggest. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think I've seen many watches under this magnification that have uh, very few issues. And this one, I really can't point much out except maybe a tiny little mark here or there, especially like uh, on this sub register. But outside of that, there's not much misprinting. And I think the uh, dial is pretty awesome up close. So moving on to the case here, and it's really nothing to write home about. It is very simply done, but thankfully, uh, because of the ergonomics of the case, it wears very well. Uh, you can just kind of see from the top, we have very, very short and stubby lugs. And although it is a very thick watch and honestly a little bit of a top heavy watch, it does wear nicely on wrist. In terms of finishing, we have mostly brushing. We have uh, the vertical brushing here on the tops of the lugs. We have a nice polished chamfer and then horizontal brushing on the sides. A little bit of a high polish relief uh, on this edge of the bezel here. And it's almost like a two part bezel, one that's completely flat and then one that kind of curves in uh, to follow the curve of the crystal a little bit more. The crystal itself is very dramatically uh, domed. It is pretty high and it has a nice curvature to it. It gives it a very vintage feel and again it does have that uh, distortion here at the edges. Something I do like is we went with the rectangular pushers here which not only are pretty low profile and don't uh, draw too much attention to themselves but it nicely ties in with the vintage feel of the watch and almost kind of mirrors the chocolate chip-esque markers. The crown itself has a really nice knurling. I think it is well proportioned it isn't too big it isn't too small and when you wind it itself it has a nice feel a nice action to it so pretty nice crown flipping it over of course we do have the seagull movement on display you have nice uh not heat blued screws but blued screws you have some nice golden gears it is a pretty looking movement and honestly for the price can't complain it might not last you the rest of your life but while it does last it'll look nice and be pretty fun and then on this blasted background, we just have some text, Studio Underdog assembled in Great Britain, the movement, the serial number, and then the water resistance rating. So pretty well done overall. Again, I will say it is a fairly chunky case itself. The mid case is pretty thin, but then you have a lot of uh, just real estate coming above the mid case itself. The strap connects pretty low to the watch. So sometimes it can feel a little bit top heavy, but at the end of the day, it is a pretty affordable watch. And I think for the design that you're getting, for the fun that it brings, it's justified. And then just looking at the strap real quick, this is what it comes with. This strap is uh, made for Studio Underdog by the Strap Tailor out of Britain. Uh, pretty good quality strap, uh, not the thickest, but that means it's very comfortable to wear pretty straight out of the box. Uh, pretty nice stitching, pretty nice holes on the strap nice studio underdog buckle so really good strap and higher quality than most straps you would find on watches at this price point activating the chrono it is a pretty mushy feeling it isn't the most premium you do have to push the uh pusher in quite a ways for it to even actuate itself and again just not the best feeling to it by comparison i have this gekota chronograph which uses the exact same movement or i believe uh the same movement without the swan neck regulator uh but either way same seagull movement, but with the crown action, it's a lot more definitive. The click is a lot more uh, pronounced, and it just feels better to actuate overall than this. It's not quite as mushy, and it just feels a little bit more confident in its actuation. So that's something that Studio Underdog can definitely improve upon. Uh, but at the end of the day, I've literally never used my chronograph, so... Uh, it is what it is. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing my Nomos Club here. And then here we have the Studio Underdog on my six and a half inch wrist. As you can tell, it wears pretty perfectly. You don't have a very long lug to lug distance. It does curve down pretty nicely. It sits fairly low to the wrist, at least uh, the bottom of the case does. It doesn't fit uncomfortably, so it doesn't uh, wear any higher than the dimensions would suggest. Uh, but again, I don't know if you can kind of tell from this point of view, but it, it does feel a little bit thick on the wrist. It feels a little bit top heavy, but it's by no means bad. I don't think it is terrible in terms of the wearing experience, and it doesn't really bother me that much. I just have to wear it for, you know, 30, 45 minutes, and I just get used to that uh, higher feeling watch. Looking at it from the side view there, you can kind of just see, again, a little bit of a top heavy buddy, but wearing experience isn't that bad. Feels very comfortable on wrist, doesn't dig in in any uncomfortable way. And overall, I just do enjoy how this wears. Moving on to some other straps. This is a green strap also made by the Strap Tailor. It, when I ordered this watch from Studio Underdog directly, they had the available option of you ordering uh, kind of quote unquote matching colored straps uh, that the Strap Tailor was doing. I don't know if this is a one-time thing or they're gonna be doing that for every uh, order window. Yeah, but worst comes to worst, you can probably just show the strap to the Strap Tailor and they can probably make it for you. 
I do think it matches the watch perfectly. The dark green tones really just blend together with the watch very well. It makes the dial almost pop a little bit more and then it makes the brown tones feel a little bit more at home uh, and not as jarring in my opinion. Very comfortable straight out of the package. Don't I haven't really worn this strap at all, but it just feels comfortable without even me having to break it in. Uh, and again, I just think the tones pair really well. Playing more into those brown tones, we have this uh, natural Patero strap from King Leathercraft. Makes the watch a little bit richer. Makes the brown really just blend together. And with a thicker strap like this that doesn't really taper as much, it doesn't make the watch feel as top heavy and just plants on the wrist very well. Next is a combo that I really liked, the black silicone NATO by Benchmark Straps. Because the case bottom wears pretty close to the wrist, thankfully adding a thin NATO doesn't really add too much to the height of the watch. And it just feels really comfortable. And I think the black tones match really nice with the chocolate chip markers and makes the watch pop a little bit. Super comfortable, pretty nice combo. Uh, definitely try out the strap. It's only like 12, 13 bucks. And I think it works on many, many, many watches. And lastly, in case you can't get that green strap from uh, the strap tailor, we have this nice green suede from Benchmark Straps. Again, pretty cheap on Amazon. I believe it's like $16, $17. So pairs really well. Again, brings out the green tones, makes it a lot uh, richer of a combo, a lot brighter of a watch almost. Very, very comfortable. I think the green tones just work perfectly. Uh, and yeah, love wearing it on the strap. Looking at the loom, there's not really much to talk about. As you can see, I mean, the initial glow is pretty decent, but there really is only loom on the hands. Uh, the orientation is not that good, and overall, you can't really read the watch based off the loom, so it's a little weird of an application. Uh, Relooming and comparing it to the Timex Snoopy, obviously, the, the glows initially are pretty similar, but Timex Snoopy obviously much more readable, and I think Studio Underdog, if they do this watch again with loom, they should just uh, do a little bit more. So pros and cons of this watch, and I think the first very big pro is the fact that it just has a unique design. It has this bi-compact layout, which isn't super popular in chronographs nowadays. It's more of a vintage idea that is coming back slightly. Uh, it's just cool to see here. It's nice to see that they went for like a big eye configuration. It just looks unique. Really interesting how they offset uh, the 12 o'clock text as well. It's just, it has a lot of unique design points and elements that I think uh, make this a interesting watch to look at at this price point. Another big thing about this Chronograph series is the fact that they all have pretty unique colors. They're all uh, multicolored. They have at least two different tones to them. And at the end of the day, you have one like the one I looked at that is inspired by mint chocolate chip ice cream or it is inspired by watermelons. Uh, and they have those like design nods in the uh, hour markers and stuff like that, which really tie the design together and just make it look visually interesting. Another big pro for the watch, I think this is pretty fair value. I mean, it's only around six, $700. And for that, you're getting a really well-made dial that is multi-leveled. It has multiple textures, multiple colors on it. Uh, you're also getting a mechanical chronograph. Of course, it's a Siegel and you can probably find a similar uh, variation of the movement for around $200, $250. But again, you're getting dial designs that maybe aren't as interesting as this one. Uh, another claim to fame for the Studio Underdog now is they're assembled in Britain. So that's pretty cool as well. I just think overall there definitely are worse ways to spend your money and this gives a compelling value for what you're getting. My last big pro, and I already really touched on it, but it's the fact that the brand uses so much color. It's nice to see color being reintroduced into the watch industry. Uh, for so long, it was black, white, blue, and if you were lucky, maybe a green dial. Uh, and now we're starting to get, with this brand, you know, green dials, we're getting blue, we're getting purple out of nowhere. So it's just nice to see a brand giving you a little bit more color options. Because at the end of the day, if you're looking at this brand, it's already likely you're a collector and you probably already have multiple watches, a couple with black dials, a couple with blue, a couple with white. Um, so it's nice to add a little bit more variety, a little bit more color, a little bit more fun into the watch box, uh, especially since, again, it doesn't really break the bank at this price point. Moving on to cons, one of my biggest, I guess you can say gripes with the watch is that it is a little bit top heavy. It's a little bit bulbous, it's a little bit tall. Uh, the way the lugs are integrated into the case, it doesn't necessarily sit perfectly and it actually makes it feel more top heavy because there's a lot of case above the lugs. So that's a design point that can maybe either be improved or possibly if they use a higher end chronograph movement, which I wouldn't be opposed to. I mean, you have a good enough design that if you slim it down and possibly uh, fine tune it a little bit, I'm willing to pay a little extra for it. Uh, it can definitely become something even greater than it is now. My only other real con with the watch is the loom. It is just only applied to the hands. It doesn't glow very brightly. It's a very weak application of loom. And I think if you're going to add loom to the watch, uh, at least make it usable. There's no orientation pips along the hour markers or anything like that. Uh, so it's not really functional loom. Uh, you could either have just not included at all and made the hands a little bit more substantial and a little bit more colorful, or just put really good loom on it. Another thing I don't like about the loom is for certain models, not really mine, but 
because the loom has that classic C3 greenish tint to it, if you got like, let's say the blue dial, or if you got, um, let's say even the purple, you would have this green type tint to the, the hands that I think would probably be at odds with the dials at some points. So it doesn't stand out too much on this green dial because the green tones work well together, but that is just something to keep in mind. So final thoughts, and I really like this watch. I really like what the brand is doing. Again, it's very colorful, it's very fun, it's not too expensive. I think it's also just really nice to add more chronograph options in the micro band space. Is this gonna be the highest quality watch you've ever felt? No, but it's really nice because the dial is done well. It's executed nicely. There are a lot of fun colors. You turn the watch over and you do have a lot of three dimensionality to that movement. It is a good look movement to look at. Uh, and at the end of the day, if you maybe don't wanna spend thousands of dollars on a mechanical chronograph, you can dip your toes in with this watch. I personally don't really have use for chronographs. I don't really wanna pay extra for it either. So at this price point, I get the look, the feel, I get the uh, quote unquote like mechanical mastery of a chronograph without having to shot the extra money for a company that put a lot of R&D in and made a chronograph that's like more bulletproof or thinner or just Swiss. There are a couple things that Studio Underdog can improve upon, but this is just one of their first watches. I'm very excited to see uh, what model lines they come out with in the future, what other colorways they do, and maybe what refinements they end up doing for this watch. Because I think as it stands, they have a very amazing and interesting first model line, and it can only get better from here. If you like the look of this watch, I would say 100% just go for it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It is fun, it is different. Uh, and I think you'll enjoy wearing it. Those are just my thoughts. Thank you as always for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.